patch, I would be like, fuck off. Like, I'm just gonna do it whatever's easiest. But yeah, it's actually a two byte patch. Is it two byte patch to image this fucking printer? Honestly, pretty impressive. <laughs> I missed the two byte patch. Can you show it? Yeah. So we changed. And it only has to be a. Honestly, we could probably do a one byte patch. I'm pretty sure we could do a one byte patch pretty easily. Um, but the two byte patch. Um. So here's the two byte patch. We change this to an FF and we change this to a 1C. We basically change a move R210 to a move R2 FF. That just increases the maximum size of our shell code from 10 bytes to uh, 255 bytes. Technically, it's actually 15 bytes and 254 bytes. And then this just causes us to jump to our shell code. But the only reason we had to do this is because this had a, this only URL decoded up to 15 bytes, we could probably just find another CGI payload that actually has a higher upper bound, or probably even uncapped, because they allocate 512 bytes on this stack. Um, and then we it would be a one byte patch, because we just change it to branch to a different location. Um, right? Yeah, so here is the, this is what we patch is in here. Basically, we change this call to a call for our shit. Um, and this, we change an FF. And they're those changes are applied in this RAM dump. Um, but um, this is decode. And the decode we change to an FF. Uh, but we could maybe find a decode that's bigger or a different CGI payload. Right, it doesn't really matter how we go about it. This is just decode. Um, and then we'll go to decode, we'll look at xrefs here. And then we'll just find something here. Here's one that is hex 31, uh, 22, 80, 80, 80, 24, 200. That's even better. This one is literally better. Land text. Now, I don't like that this is basically a loop. Uh, so 200, that one's kind of hard because we would have to set like the number there. Um, here's the 200, okay, same thing, 200. Um, here's the 200 on Ivar1, which is uh, WLS text two. Okay, so this one, we could probably just do the patch here, and then we'd get we'd get more space. It literally would just decode a bigger buffer. Um, although we don't have a branch here, we don't have a oh, uh, there's a Blixar too. If it's zero, then it's. Uh, that otherwise decoded into the stack and then this does another thing this is probably stir copy oh oh that's really complex I mean yeah we could probably do that but it's hard um we could also just make a bigger move right So there's another 200. Um, 200. 200 is just massive. We could do anything in that. Uh, is the 80 hex a little thin? I don't know. One of those 200s we could probably do. We're not going to do it, but... We would just have to figure out this, which is just more escaping shit. Um, honestly, this would be probably encoding constraints, so it, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, is it still going? It's still going. We're at 339 megs, so we're about a third of the way there. Um, sweet. That's pretty good. 
But yeah, one one of these we could probably use. Um, where's decode? Decode function. I don't know. Can you just patch two hundred instead of FF? Like I the basically I don't have room in the instruction. I would have to add an instruction. So, not trivially, no. Um. Yeah. I mean, we could just we could just say that R two is an address. Um, and I don't know if R two is a clobber. No, I think R2 can get clobbered. But, like, we could just rely on, like, R2 being basically fucking a pointer, right? Um, we could actually replace this instruction, this two-byte instruction, with something where it just sets, uh, where it just loads a, like, random address or some shit, or deref something on the stack that we know is gonna be a big number, and then we just basically are uncapped, and then it's just on us to make sure we don't overflow the stack, because it's 512 bytes on there. Um, but FF is adequate for what we do. I think the two-byte patch is cool. Um, we can't get simpler than a two-byte patch in this case. I'm sure we could do a one-byte patch. I mean, ultimately, we can probably do a zero byte patch because we're just gonna get code execution because we'll just find a bug, right? But a two byte patch to get basically arbitrary C code execution in a pretty confident manner, I'm gonna give that an A plus. I'm guessing we could do a bigger thing on the stack here though. Chat, what do you think? Do we kill this and restart it and just do a bigger thing on the stack? Like 1024? We risk potentially going out of bounds on the stack here. And then here we'll just say, um, if this is not equal to 1024, aren't we like halfway there? We are, uh, but I, th I still think this will actually be faster. Mm, 1024. Um, define, copy size, uh, let's, let's try like, the, you know, copy size, and then send, if it's not equal to that, then just crash, we haven't confirmed that that guarantees a crash, but I, I think it, I think it will have a good chance of doing it, I, I guess I don't need to assign it to a variable, do I? Um, we're gonna kill it. Make. Okay, that's good. We are in bounds, just barely. Just barely in bounds. Okay, I'm hard rebooting it by pulling the power cable. Plug it back in. Booting. Okay. I literally think this will be faster. We were halfway done. I don't know if, like, 4K on the stack is, is, was big. That's a, that's a big stack allocation. Um, but we'll see. Ram all. Okay, that is zero, and then run. Yeah, it's going so much faster. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It, it's literally, like, four times faster. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fucking faster. It, this will definitely complete faster because it's greater than a 2x speed up. Nice. Pipe it through PV. Oh yeah, I always forget about PV. Let me install PV fast. How do you do it? Just uh, pipe it, pipe it to PV. Okay, we'll do another reboot just for funsies. Cause it's fun. I enjoy doing this. Hard reboot. Booting. What do you do? Just uh, PV, uh, PV, PVT, PV, PV into this.
Oh, we can just do uh, the other way. PV um, ram all dot bin nc l four four two one. Can we do that? Oh fuck. Oh, not like this. Yeah, this is wrong. The fuck, dude? I don't know what it expects. <laughs> Copy each supplied file into standard output. Transferring a file. NCL4421 uh, PV foo.bin. Okay. 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 Ram all. Oh, I, I called it foo.bin. Um, rm star dot bin lsl rm a dot out. Um, make. Okay, cool. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be ram. Zero 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 four zero 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 zero. I like to store addresses when I'm making like a final dump here. Okay, boom, boom. Yeah, two megs a second, dude. Come on. Look at that. Look at that quality right there. Honestly, that's probably bottlenecking on Wi-Fi. Like, legitimately, that's probably bottlenecking on Wi-Fi. The other one was definitely bottlenecking on the, the like, send call. But, but yeah, up to there, and then we'll hopefully crash it. Hopefully at the end it just hard crashes when we get to a gig, and then hopefully if we don't send something perfectly, it'll also crash, but we haven't verified that it actually crashes. But I would say if it gets to the end and it immediately crashes, then that would lead me, lead me to being confident um, that it will just crash, like, if it did not crash and it crashes at the end, then I think that means our crashing oracle is valid, and thus our dump is complete. If that makes sense. Bring the router closer. Oh, it's close. It's just, it, it, it's a fucking printer. It probably has, like, wireless A, like, whatever the cheapest chips that they could possibly buy, Right? Um, all right, it's a bio break time. Beer back.
So notice how the speed is fluctuating. I think that is an indicator of which memory is maybe uh, uncacheable. It's likely they have like cacheable memory, uncacheable, right through, like those are probably the repetitions. Uh, so they probably are slightly different types of memory access. All right. Um, <laughs> I want to drink my flux remover. It's where my uh, water is. We'll, uh, we'll put that over there. Probably not the best to put where my water glass is. Flux off is the best. Yeah, it just has a it says, has such a an earthy undertone. Six hundred megs. Gonna upload to YouTube. Yeah, I'll probably upload it to YouTube. All right. Nine hour video, hell yeah, pretty standard. Um. Oof. God, this map looks brutal. It's a very short map. And then it's mainly about just dodging those, I guess. Honestly, that wasn't a terrible time for just yoinking it in there. God damn. Oof. Okay, improved. We're at 776 megs, 200 more to go. Oh, every time's getting better. Fuck. Damn, that was actually a really good pace too. Yikes. Yikes. Ah, I'm taking that last corner really slow. Eight fifty six megs. I just want to keep an eye on it so that basically when it hits a gig, I want to make sure the printer panics. Because if the printer does not panic, uh, I'm gonna be really unhappy, right? Well, I'm not going to be unhappy. I mean, it's still transmitting data, uh, but we're kind of assuming that derefing one gig will crash the printer uh, because we use that as our oracle to verify that we haven't haven't had a send fail. Because otherwise, we might have sends failing right now, and we have no idea it's happening, which would be bad. Ah, that was not terrible, to be honest. <laughs> I 
I love when one person shoots the gun and everyone else starts shooting. We're at 978 megs. 983. And thank God, PV actually says that it's Mebibytes. Oh, is it gonna go to gigs though? 999, 101, 103, 04, 06, 08, 09, 11, 13, 16, 18, 19, 21. Reboot, please. Ah? It did reboot. Yeah, it rebooted. Now it's hard to say if it rebooted due to derefing that that four million or forty million uh, or not. But whatever, we we don't really know. All right. Um. Is that exactly one gig? I think it is. Just want to double check. Yeah, exactly one gig, right? If that was a five, yeah, okay. So we have exactly one gig, which is exactly what we expected, exactly out of the exactly printer, exactly. Um, awesome. Chat, we're gonna try something quick. I'm gonna try to hardwire this. Is that not, oh, is that Ethernet? Is that not Ethernet? It's not Ethernet. Fuck. Well, it. <laughs> it's not Ethernet. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. What the fuck is that? Line? Hmm. Oh well. All right. Um. It's a modem. I mean, one of them is a modem. I don't know what fucking line is. I guess yeah, fax. Uh, the, yeah, cause there's fax and then there's the. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I was like, why the fuck are there two things? But it's fax and external. Yeah, it's RJ11. Um, damn. Well, that's fucking dumb. Um, all right. Oh, I'm going to try to reboot the printer quick. Um, all right, so we're just going to try to reboot the printer by doing this. Oh, fuck off, C, dude. Is that actually going to cause it to get dereft? Yes. Um, and it did reboot. Now, I don't know if that's due to other connections, so we'll just do a uh, for blah blah. Um, 
and this should all get optimized out. Okay, so literally, here's our shell code. Dref for, for dref one gig loop forever. Um, if okay. So mainly, we just want to see that this reboot. And it did. Okay, so we have a reboot oracle. It's also safe to say memory is not mapped at, uh, at one gig. So this is probably all of RAM. RAM is just repeated multiple times. Um, so I'm really happy that that crashed the printer because that also means all of our sends were fully successful. We know that, I guess, because we have the full size, uh, but still makes me happy. Um... All right, so what I want to do is, I guess, I want to, what is the best way to check if this is just repeating? Um, hmm. Write a program? Yeah, I really don't want to is the problem. Why is this so fucking slow? Chop it up in diff? Yeah, that's that's the current plan. But I, I kinda wanted an easier, faster, simpler solution. You know you know? Picking up what I'm putting down. Is that arm assembly? Yes. It definitely feels like it's repeating. Chop it up in hash. The hashes won't match. Display it as a bitmap. If you can propose a way to view a one gig file as a bitmap very quickly, I... Sure. <laughs> How big is a gig? I mean, it's pretty obvious it's repeating. Um, a gig. Square root. Okay. Uh, a gig divided by... Can't divide a gig by three. Fuck. Uh, okay. Um, here. Uh, let's just... Let's just... This will be fun. Um, we're gonna try to... Uh, let me see here. Open. Okay, open. Super peak poke. Show all, all files. Open this. Uh, unknown file type. Can't, uh, can I get like a raw pop-up? Can I get like an import? Can you not import in GIMP? Is that not a fucking thing? Are you serious? What? What? You can? Well, I don't see an option for it. <laughs> Rename it dot raw? I mean, sure. Yeah, that's gonna think it's an actual raw file, and that's not that's not what I need. Um, select file type. Oh, here we go. Um, we want raw image data. Okay. Raw image data. Uh-huh, and then this is going to be a uh, gray 8-bit, um, and then we'll square root that, and then it's uh, 32768 by 32768. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, we'll try 
we'll try RGBA. Um... RGB alpha, palette RGB, uh, no palette. Um, that should be the whole thing, right? <laughs> okay, there's a there's a lot of alpha, but I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. <laughs> Honestly, kind of impressed, Gimp. Not, not, not terrible. Discard the alpha channel. How do I do that? <laughs> oh, those are just all Fs, or just zeros. Yeah, it's just zeros. Yeah. <laughs> Add a white layer. Yeah, it's just zeros. Hmm. Oh, there you go. Well, there you go. So technically, technically, chat, um, if you want, if you want the RAM file, just uh, take a screenshot now, and uh, yep, yeah, it's clearly repeating eight times. Yeah, it's the same thing eight times. Yep. Yeah, what does it end at? Like here, a little uh, uh, white, blue, white, white, black. And then that should be kind of at the, uh, before we see the, like, start. Uh, here it is. White, blue, white, white, black. Yep. It's repeating. Confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> That's kind of cool, dude. You see the white stripe there? Oh, man. Look at that. Isn't that a valuable way of viewing your, your RAM? Well, I think it's safe to say a lot, a lot of shit's not really being used in memory. Why do they have 128 megs? I guess maybe so you can buffer like a large file that you want to print some shit. Um, okay. I always view my RAM and GIMP. Yeah, I mean, honestly, kind of surprised that it just took it. I'm pretty impressed. All right, so we can close this. Don't save. You can close this. Don't save. You can close that. You can close that. Uh, that one will keep open. Uh, and then we're going to say this is RAM here. Um, so do you think I should tell Ghidra that the RAM repeats? Or do you think I should just load up this blob? I think I should tell it the RAM repeats, but I'm kind of scared that it's going to do something dumb. Um, length 8. RAM. Okay, that's RAM. Okay, number of bytes. No, don't analyze. All right. Do we tell it it's executable? Or it's writable? Okay. We got RAM at 8. For eight. Um, RWX uh, byte mapped to zero, one to one byte map. Uh, RAM one, 10, 
RAM 2, RWX byte map to 0, uh, 18, this is RAM 3, uh, byte map to 0, okay, RAM 4, this, this, uh, we're at 20 now, uh, RWX byte map to 0, um, RAM 5, this, this, we're at 28, byte map to 0, we can fix permissions later, RAM 6, this, this, this is at 30, byte map to 0, and then we have, oops, RAM 7, this is the final one, this should be at 38 for this, and byte mapped, um, executable, Initialize byte map to zero, one to one mapping. Zero to eight, eight to one, 18, 20, 28, 30, 38. So that is all of RAM, right? Literally everything. So the question is do we want to say it's writable? Um, and is it a problem? so tough dude it's so tough like what does Gider do if it's writable it assumes the memory can change hmm I think it's okay. Let's just do this. Let's just do this. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live chat. Executable everything. Read. <sighs> um, and then we're just gonna say, uh, Starting at four, four C is read writable volatile, and this is unknown. So that's everything else. We say everything else is read write volatile. That way, when things do hit some of these like uh, ramp when. When some of these things are accessed, because we know some of these ranges are used for MMIO and stuff, this will mean that it won't get very... The analysis won't get really confused um, when something is, like, read twice in a loop. Um, so that should hopefully help that. And this should be a really good setup for analysis now. So let's go with full defaults. We can just turn them as writable, and I think it will be okay if we reanalyze, so whatever. I prefer to analyze as it not being writable. Obviously, like, indirect things are not going to propagate that sort of information, so I'm not too worried about it. And then I guess we play video games again uh, while, we, while we let that process, which will take a little bit of time. But we'll finally get to see what, what this thing actually fucking looks like. Um... It's going to be really interesting. Technically, technically we know that Flash is mapped into some of those uh, ranges. So we could actually put Flash in there too, and then Flash would be the correct values. Um, yeah, technically we should do that, but I'm not 100%. I'm not too worried about it. Um, what we should do is basically binary search what address ranges are accessible, and then based on the address ranges that are accessible... Um, is this slick? No, it's not. Basically, what we can do is, um, we could, 
uh, probe kind of the address ranges to try to figure out what address ranges are valid, which ones fault, which ones don't fault. And then depending on which ranges fault and don't fault, uh, we can just try and dump all of memory, right? We can find everything that's readable and try to just dump everything. Okay, so that was an 800 leave and it was too, too much. Let's try, uh, I guess this is 800 again. YOLO! Fuck! This is a hard fucking map. Oh, is this hardcore? Yeah, we're on hardcore. Yeah, let's go to relaxed running. I don't want to do a hardcore map right now. Do you run diagonal because they don't normalize the movement speed? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that, but you run diagonally, I mean, maybe? Like, that might be what the definition of strafing is. Um, but yeah, basically, by running diagonally, you can pick up more speed than you're supposed to get. It's a mechanic of basically all the Quake variants. Oof. Take damage there? Okay. Okay. This is a uh, actually a really detailed map, to be honest. 18 seconds for this map. Okay. A couple holes there. All right, so this map is pretty linear, pretty straightforward. Yikes. Oh, come on, dude. Ah, yikes. Decompile in a way. It's a really nice looking map. Yeah, this map is fantastic. That was a good stare. That was not great. Ugh. God, those corners are tough, man. I feel like the time on the good times on this map are gonna be really hard to beat. Yikes. That insta killed me? Fuck off. I really like this map, though. I don't like that that death. What is the chair? It's a Herman Miller Arion. Fuck. I just want to get one run through this map, dude. Uh, I lost so much speed there, but whatever. We're just gonna... Oh my god, dude. The ground here. And where's that at? Okay. I lost so much time there. But honestly, I feel like I can get a decent time on this map. I just have to get some reference spots. Pets on sub-21. Oh, sub-21's easy as fuck, dude. Maybe not within the three minutes left on this map, though. Because we're about to go to the next map. But sub-21 I probably could get within 30 minutes.
trash. Sub 20. I mean, that 18 is redonkulous, dude. God, that fucking corner, man. That's a good opener. I want to vote on that so bad right now. Okay. Ah, oh, I had a different cycle on the stairs, dude. Oh, fucking EOFs here now. Whew. Map is fucking tough, dude. As long as we're getting more consistent at some area, then we're making progress. Mm, that was trash, but we're gonna book it. We're gonna book it. We're gonna book it. We're gonna not clip those grates. We're gonna not clip that floor. And there's a 21. What did we bet on, chat? Sub 21? Son of a bitch. Sub 21. Fucking hell, dude. Literally 21 flat. Literally 21 flat. <laughs> the sub 21 dream, dude. Not sub 21. Uh. <sighs> sub 20 is going to be pretty hard, to be honest. Still analyzing. It's going to take a hot minute. Especially when I told it to const prop basically all of RAM. <sighs> I had such a good line there. And I just took it a little too wide. The clipping on some of these doors is tough just due to those little, like, little, little flanges, little, uh, whatever you want to call them, extrusions. Oh my god, dude. Fuck. I don't know how I'm going to get through that narrow hallway fast. Honestly, already a pretty scuffed run. Let's just see what we... Oh. Well, that run sucked anyways. This one sucks already. I had a really bad circle jump. I'm already behind a fuck ton. Yeah, terrible. Terrible. Terrible run. And we're dead. Perfect. Another bad circle jump. Once again, really slow. Not as bad as last. Still bad. Oh, come on, dude. This is faster if you look at the ceiling. No. Unfortunately, no. Ah! Oh! These stairs, dude, yeah, I don't really understand them, to be honest. And that might be the problem, is I'm not approaching them with knowledge of how they work. I mean, I know how stairs work, I just don't know how these stairs work. More specifically, I don't know what the death trigger is, or the damage trigger is. <laughs> Whew. Still analyzing. It's analyzing tables. Mmm. Those Arian chairs are 2K here. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
A good Arian will set you back 1400 and then in a country where you have to import them, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. 2k seems completely reasonable. Um, you can get them used pretty cheap. Pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, they're like the universal uh, like high-end office chair, and thus you can kind of just find them used for basically pennies, because companies go under or businesses uh, stop providing, or businesses like cut an office or update to the latest and greatest new tech and office ergonomics, um, so you can often get them pretty cheap. They've been around for a long time. Got one used for about 500 euros. Yeah, that sounds about right. I just highly recommend get the, me the mesh like backing and shit. I think most of them are mesh to be honest, um, but it's just, it's so much better. You, they just breathe, right? Breathing is, is good in a chair for many reasons. Easier to clean, too. Ah. And seem really... Seem to be only popular in NA. Oh, interesting. I mean, they are an expensive fucking chair. I could see most non, like... Non-uber-rich countries being like, it's probably not worth having fucking Arians. Because they're right. But I think they're worth... I just don't under- it just feels like random. I feel like I have a random chance of making it through the door. Like, literally, I don't understand the trigger that is causing death or damage. We'll go straight up the middle. I, like, I don't know. I mean, this, this run's already scuffed. I can still probably beat my old time, because my old time was shit. Uh, there's a 2075, sub-21. Still analyzing. Yikes. What was my strafe? 36%. So fucking low, dude. I guess that's just the back half. I feel like I'm strafing pretty well at the start. And then towards the end, I just get so scared. Ooh. That was good. Uh... I think I lost too much speed to have this be my best time, but we'll see. Yeah, 2093. I actually like that cycle when I use that ramp. Okay, straight up the middle. Okay, straight up the middle seems consistent. God, this map feels so fast. Like, it feels so fast. I actually really like this map. Oh. I think hitting the stairs damages you. I'm not 100% sure. I think it might be the walls around the stairs, to be honest. Yikes. This is not great. But these runs... The speed of these runs doesn't really matter. Okay. Welp! Welp! My head's cramped. Gets you scared. Yeah, this is like... I feel like I'm flying, dude. I feel so zoomy. It makes me feel good, you know? Analyzing address tables. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop or something. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not great, not great. Terrible, terrible. Still probably could be our best run just because how bad our last half is. Okay, no, not anymore. Damn, dude. Oh, look at that. A bang chair. 
Did I add that? Did someone just add that? Someone just added that, I think. Because I didn't fucking add that. Ah, strafe, you bitch! Strafe, you fuck! <sighs> Woo, this is faster than I've been through here before. And I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, I had 800 cues, dude. It was so good at the start. Ah, it's still my best, but damn it. Dude, I had 800 quakes through the, through that second corner. I was booking it, dude. This split, I had such a good split on the first split. God damn. Okay, not bad, and bad cycle, though. I could have probably cut that closer and saved it. Yikes. Yikes. Fuck it. Analyzing address tables. Is it making any progress, or is it stuck? Oh, it's, it's making progress. It's decompiling a function. Razor Naga? No, this is a Logitech G600. That's a 27, but a bad cycle. I mean, I can reliably probably cut that corner, to be honest. Okay, maybe not. Ah! You gotta go a little bit wider there, dude. Ah, son of a bitch. I didn't strafe through that corner, that was bad. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm fast through here. As long as I'm fast through there. Okay, technically, if I get a sub 20, and this is the perfect run, we're good. Okay, this is trash. Analyzing op refs? God, it's gotta be close. Is it? I feel like it's still missing a lot of code. Oh, we mapped in a lot of RAM. Had two Razer Nagas and they both died after a year. Sounds like Razer products. Every Razer product I've ever owned has died within six months. And basically all the people I know who have Razer Nagas are on their like fifth or sixth ones. I don't understand how that brand can universally be so shit and people keep buying it. It's like, oh, I fucking love them. They're great mice. I'm on my seventh mouse. What? <laughs> like, it's so weird to me. Must be breaking because good product. Now, maybe they have really nice ergonomics. This mouse is too bulky that it uh, is painful in the hands. Um, but I just refuse to buy Razer products. For that, for basically for that exact reason. Okay, that was the end. This map looks like shit, dude. Mm. <sighs> ah! This is all about cutting corners on this map. Okay, that actually was really good, that hit there. Ooh. Analyzing tables. Come on, Ghidra, do your damn thing. Ah, I feel like I had that. I feel like I was, ugh.
Okay, a, f a 1447. Okay, it's shit. <laughs> um, where are the checkpoints? Okay, so I have to go that way. I'm trying to think if I can get some crazy big ass cheese. Okay, that's definitely how I want to hit that because now I have more speed. I can make this gap. Then we can go tight, maybe around this side. Mmm. I picked up speed at least. Ugh. It's gonna be trash though, yeah. Ah! Fucking re, dude. That was a bad circle jump. Wireless is insanely good now for mice, really? I don't know if I'll ever trust a wireless mouse. Unless you're not talking about mice. I, I, I don't think I've ever had a wireless mouse that struggles to do basic pointering. Like, like it, it's not even like, oh, it, it's not great in FPS at 3 billion frames per second. Like, literally, I struggle to hover over a start menu. I won't ever trust a wireless mouse. Yeah, it just like I used to carry one with me for travel for the convenience and I stopped even for travel when I'm not actually like doing anything with a mouse. There we go. That wasn't bad. Still wasn't good. I don't understand where the two seconds of time save is. <laughs> two seconds of time save here sounds Fucking redonkulous, dude. It's gonna be slow, yeah. Oh damn, he beat my time. What's the topography of this? Okay, it's not flat at the top. I didn't know if it would be flat at the top or not. I, I think I have to get that corner. Mmm, maybe I can get three bounces on that ramp. I'm gonna try and start far back now. Okay, I'm only gonna get two bounces. Yikes. Been using a Logitech G Pro Wireless. Zero difference from a wire one. Huh. I'm curious if wireless wireless mice are better in or different in different countries. Like based on whatever spectrums are being used for Wi-Fi, because I know Wi-Fi and wireless mice and microwaves are all on the same frequency in the US. So basically if you use any of those devices at the same time, yeah, it's gonna be shit. <laughs> Ah, oh, I got greedy because I thought I had it so clear. Bad cycle. Aren't they all Bluetooth? Isn't Bluetooth the same as wireless? Isn't it uh, 2.4 gig? No? Rip. God, this map fucking blows. Ah. 
Use my wireless keyboard to cook my chicken nuggets. Light speed? Oh, do they have a custom like dongle with a custom protocol that isn't just fucking Bluetooth? Because that would be nice. Bluetooth is arguably the shittiest protocol that's ever been fucking in uh, invented. Bluetooth is so universally shit in every fucking situation. It's terrible at audio. It's terrible at information. It's terrible at data. It's terrible at low bandwidth, high bandwidth. It's fucking universally absolute garbanzo beans, dude. Isn't Bluetooth improving? I mean, arguably, I could shit and it would be better than Bluetooth. So, sure, I'm sure it's improving because literally anything you do is an improvement to Bluetooth. It's so fucking bad, dude. Never fucking works. It's so inconsistent. Like, pairing never fucking works in vehicles or with speakers. Like, I, I have no idea how that protocol works so fucking poorly, so universally. <laughs> it's so unbelievably bad. <laughs> you got a shell on the printer already? I mean, we're not gonna get a shell. There's no shell on the printer. I mean, maybe there is. Okay. We did see shell-like things, but that was probably a debug port. We could maybe try to enable the debug port and get a shell into their, their debug communication thing. Bluetooth introduced May 18, 1989? Holy shit. 31 years ago. Well, they haven't really improved it since then. That's for damn sure. Fucking trash protocol, absolute garbage, full of bugs, Math massive amounts of pre-auth attack surface uh, that requires string parsing. It's fucking absolute garbage. What a terrible protocol. Oh, I didn't have a cycle there. Modern print printers are constructs from hell? No, modern printers are fine, dude. Just pay for your ink, dude. Get your DM8 ink. Be a good boy. Pay for the highest price ink. Make sure you throw your ink cartridges away when they're 90%, because that means they're empty. Just, just, you know, be a good little boy, and printers will be nice to you. Still analyzing. Come on, Ghidra, you piece of shit. Fucking hate Java. Fucking hate object-oriented languages. Let's just allocate everything on the heap. Let's put a lock on everything. Let's use global locks. Let's make threading as impossible as possible. Give them all your money and the printer will work for a bit. See? Exactly, dude. Exactly. Oh, we got four people here at the same time. It's kind of cool. Damn, this time's bad. I need to cut that corner tighter. You're <laughs> right into that cone. Look, man, the cones aren't easy to avoid. They're, they're fucking big and cone-shaped. Okay, that was a good corner. Uh, was that a PB? No, it's trash. I, I was hoping that would be a PB, but uh, it was trash. <laughs> Speaking of hell, my friend started working uh, for a company that specialized in IoT. Um, I'm not judging you, uh, but I need, 
want you to know that the security on IoT really, really sucks. It can't be that bad. One month later, I have access to video feeds of all clients. Yeah, that sounds about right. How else, how else would you have access to all their video feeds? What can I do here? What can I... Can I bounce off that cone? Can I... Can I do some cone stuff? I'm gonna try some cone stuff. Look at this. Boom. Nah, no. Cone stuff ain't happening. I would need so much speed to clear that gap that I don't know if it's possible. They designed the firmware with a focus on speed so they can push products out? Yeah, I mean, you have to with IoT. There's no IoT device that is manufactured that is useful for more than, like, fucking eight minutes. They're the most gimmicky, stupid fucking items. They're literally just, like, throwaway, useless, random shit that you'll never use again, and three days later, when the company gets purchased and bought out, and their domain name uh, ends up expiring because they don't renew it, and your product no longer does literally anything because if it can't reach that domain, it's just, it literally can't boot. Yeah, fucking trash. But my wireless toaster. It's so stupid, dude. Like, I can see a reason for a, a local, like, Bluetooth fridge or whatever the fuck gimmicky item you have so that you can, like, monitor it locally or, like, log data to your phone. But, like, the straight-up permanent Wi-Fi connected shit? Fuck off, dude. It's such a gimmick, and it's just not... It's just a fad. IoT is literally... Just something that you use to flex on people when they come to your house and you show them, like, how if you clap your ass cheeks together, your lights turn on. And people are like, damn, dude, this this dude must be rich because he's got the Alexa ass clap variant. Like, it's just, it's a fucking status symbol. It doesn't actually really provide anything of fucking value. Like, it's so stupid. Can you clear the jump over the last cone on the right? Um, I don't know which cone you're talking about, but I, I can't jump over any cones. None of these cones are jumpable over, right? Like, like, boom. <laughs> like, I gotta get, I gotta get all the way up there. <laughs> Remember when Amazon, uh, went down and you couldn't use Amazon doorbell? Yep. Yep. It's just so weird. The only valid use of IoT is making coffee. But even then, you can just set a timer or use Bluetooth. It doesn't have to be internet connected to make fucking coffee. You can just have something that's, like, locally on your LAN. It doesn't need to be internet connected. It's ridiculous. The only reason it's internet connected is so they can drive fucking traffic and mine your data. Like, the only reason these things need to actually connect out is literally to mine your data and maybe to get past port forwarding rules because that makes things a little easier. But on a LAN, like, port forwarding doesn't even fucking matter. <laughs> AWS went down my temperature sensors, went offline, yep. Yep. It's just weird, dude. I just... I think the marketing is just too good. I think people are just too convinced that they actually, like, need these devices and think they're going to be useful to them. And then they buy them, and then they realize that they're completely fucking useless. Like... What if I want my toaster to read Wikipedia articles? Well, I've got a tool for you. If you want to read Wikipedia articles offline without the internet, I I got you. We, we got you hooked up on this stream. Ooh. Oh, I, I got a PB in there somewhere. 
Uh, we've been promised tech utopias for decades. Now we finally have IoT toasters. Yep. Yep. Always on, always listening. If your internet goes down, you can't make toast. DRM toast, where it will, you, you, you have to uh, brand a QR code onto your bread, uh, and you have to pay $10 for the branding stamp, and it will refuse to toast your bread unless it has the right QR code branded onto it. There you go. There's a million-dollar idea. It's fucking crazy, dude. People are just so illiterate to what computers and technology can do. Like, it's so sad. Like, the fact that Theranos was a thing. Like, how fucking... How, like, I don't get it. I don't... I Like, I don't even understand how you can have, like, even a lukewarm fucking IQ and you can't figure out that Theranos is an absolute fucking scam. Like, what... What, what fucking belief system do you have to have that you think that that can fucking work? Like, holy shit, dude. Theranos is a multi-billion dollar scam where basically they were convinced, uh, well, they, they weren't convinced. They basically convinced others that you could just, like, implant a fucking chip and it would just like give you immunities and whatever whatever medicine you want and it would just like bioprint it in your fucking arm. Like come on, dude. You like that's just it's not how physics works. It's not how biology works. It's not how technology works. Literally, if you even remotely understand one of those three fields, you know that it's absolute bullshit. It wasn't there no sorry. What what was it? Um Maybe Theranos is something else. No, it's Theranos, yeah. Theranos, the, the multi-billion, yeah, $10 billion valuation, complete fucking scam, right? Um, yeah, real-time cures. Like, it's a straight-up fucking scam, and everyone, everyone praised it. Everyone praised it. I don't think it was just blood tests. Um, the rise and fall, facing trial, yup. It's crazy because so many people just fucking parroted her around. It's fucking weirdo. Like, I just don't get it. I don't understand how people didn't think it was a scam immediately. It's, it's fucking crazy. They basically made blood tests and then they sold their company as if they were, like, curing everything. It, it's, like, like, the only thing they had was blood tests, but that was not their pitch, right? The pitch of the technology that they had and were working on were not blood tests. It's supposed to be a smart patch. Yeah, it was supposed to, like, literally, like, fucking real-time cure you of shit like instantaneously detect when something went wrong and like bam instantly you get cured th through fucking magic kickstarter is full of comparable shit oh yeah i mean it's a lot of it's like green technology that people get really excited about that's just absolute bullshit um and it's so frustrating because people just get like so defensive of it because it's just like virtue signaling that like they're a good person because they support this kickstarter when ultimately it's just a fucking scam There's, so much of that green stuff is just scams so sad dude not even star trek has that <laughs> i don't know it's so it's so sad it's so sad that like you can get multiple billions of dollars for something that is just not humanly fucking possible. Not even humanly possible. Like, literally will never be possible. Ever. Like, it's just not something that can be done. Like, it's fucking crazy that you can just get billions of dollars. 
I, I highly recommend you, you, you like, watch some of the things on, like, Theranos and, uh, like, Elizabeth Holmes. She, she like, uh, would talk in a deep, artificially deep voice um, because she thought it gave her credibility, right? Like, she literally had a fake voice that she would use at all times because she thought it made her more credible. Like, that's how fucking pathetic, like this company is when when you literally have to change your voice because you don't actually have any credibility in your actual fucking product it's ridiculous <laughs> um what's Ghidra at i mean Ghidra doesn't have a progress bar so it's just it's just it has a progress bar that it's doing stuff <laughs> it doesn't mean anything it's analyzing tables i mean we gave it a lot we gave it a lot to, to work on. We didn't actually give it really any more code than we've ever had, but it's just probably really confused about RAM. It's just, it's just not, it's just dumb dumb, you know? So is there a faster way through here than taking that? I don't think it's never impossible. It's imp like, I'm like, I don't know. I'd say it's in the never impossible category. <laughs> Imagine if it was not Java. Yeah, that would be nice. Ms. Foster was. Holmes' father was a vice president at Enron. <laughs> Jesus. It's very improbable that something like that will ever be implemented. I mean, like, once again, not saying they're products that they had or they had, like, a viable path to, but the promises they had were just not possible, right? Like... <laughs> I don't know. I, I would have to, like, read more up on it. But I, I remember, like, maybe the documentaries I watched were wrong. But just the claims were, were fucking outrageous. It was like you just, you like, it literally just will automatically cure you. It will come up with a new cure on the fly. And then somehow out of thin air, it's going to find all of the proteins and compounds it needs to fucking manufacture this shit. Like... Um, in a small patch that's on your skin that you don't even feel is there. It's like, fuck off. Like... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, look at, look, like, what was their old company name? Uh, they renamed it Theranos. Um, yeah, their original company name was called Real Time Cures. <laughs> um, God. Um, yeah, Home changed the name from Real-Time Cures when, uh, because it was decided that too many people were dubious of the word cure. Okay, not a great, not a great sign. Um, and they also had, like, flaws in even their basic blood test stuff, too. Claim to have developed devices to automate and miniaturize blood tests using microscopic blood volumes. Theranos dubs its blood collection as the Nanotainer and its analysis machine, the Edison. Holmes reportedly named Edison after Thomas Edison, blah, blah, blah. Um, the blood sample was collected via a finger prick then transferred to a nanotainer through the sample collection device. Um, let's see. In 2016, they introduced a new robotic capillary blood testing unit called the Mini Lab, um, but did not present any data supporting the claims abilities of the device. It is allegedly capable of carrying out a range of tests from a small amount of blood. Um, wow, Walgreens had a partnership. Holy shit, dude. I guess maybe they mainly just did blood tests, but... Uh... I feel like they definitely had higher fucking claims than that. Hmm.
I know that a lot of their tests did not actually work. Walgreens well, spent over half a billion dollars redoing their stores. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's fucking insane, dude. People just give way too much money to tech scammers. Literally, all you have to do is just take something that already exists and then say that you're a tech company and congratulations, you're, you know, you're valued way more than you're actually worth. It's fucking so stupid, dude. So stupid. Such a scam. Theranos story confirms that if you're born privileged, you can sell every bullshit. I mean, I don't know. Like, plenty of people who have zero privilege who sell bullshit. It's like, I think universally you can just sell bullshit. <laughs> like, I mean, look at, like, literally the entire fucking, like, psychic industry and like horoscopes and all of those things. I recognize some people do it more for fun and they don't take it too seriously, but like those industries have existed forever. And it's like, it's, it's fucking crazy, dude. Yo, I'm a big tech company. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Everyone get some billions in here for Claire. <laughs> You just have to be a good salesman. Yeah. I mean, it's not just. I don't, I don't want to say just, because being a good salesman is very difficult. But, yes. Even social networks are basically selling bullshit. I mean, social networks, while they sell bullshit, um, social networks are basically the pinnacle of human nature, right? So, like, they're, they're selling exactly what humans want. It's this desire to be connected and to share shit and to brag and to flex and to be flexed on. It's, it's like the fucking pinnacle of human nature. So like, yeah, while it's bullshit and like pretty vapid, it's, it's what people want, dude. People want that shit so bad. I would say it's only bullshit if it actually has, like, no objective value. Uh, where social media has an objective value. And that's just, like, you know, people's feelings. Which is a fucking value, right? I thought all that people wanted was Scrum. Oh my god, fuck Scrum, dude. Fuck Scrum. I hate Scrum. Like... So many people try to use Scrum for vulnerability research, and it's ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, can you uh, can you figure out your timeline for when you're going to find this bug, and then a timeline for when you're going to land the exploit when you find this bug that you don't know if it exists or not? Yeah, just give me some timelines on that. It's just so stupid. I think it, I, like, I hate Scrum, but it is, it is valuable because ultimately you need to, like, some people can literally basically do nothing unless they have an organization mechanism forced onto them, right? Like, and that's that's not really a negative, uh, like I, I fall into that bucket where I will basically do nothing uh, that anyone tells of me unless I am frequently reminded to do it. Um, I think that's a pretty normal trait. So something like Scrum is just an approximation of keeping productivity up. Social networks, bad execution, good idea. Yeah. I mean, like, what's the ideal social network? Something that's paid for, that doesn't have ads, and doesn't mine your data? And, like, like I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's just still going to always be the same thing, even if it's paid, even if it's not data mined. I do better with a deadline. Yeah, everyone does better with a deadline. Like, 100%. Deadlines are fucking critical. If people didn't have deadlines, just people would do, like, literally fucking nothing. <laughs> it's time for government-run social networks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get, let's get Equifax on top of uh, the next social network. That, that, my friends, would be the pinnacle. You would know 
you could look at their social score to see whether or not uh, they're worth being a friend, you know? It works out well in China. Yeah. It's such a good idea. It's like, this person has a 650 friend quality score. Ah, uh, hmm. Probably not worth being my friend. There's just, there's too, there's too much of a risk that they won't be a good friend, you know? <laughs> oh my god, Ghidra. I just think Ghidra can't do it. I think it's just, I think it's just gonna get stuck. I mean, it's not stuck, but it's definitely doing some uh, end to the end computation right now. That was a decent turn. It was pretty bad, but it was decent. Why not Ida? It's less accessible to people who watch stream. And Ghidra is better for long-term projects, in my opinion. Dropping frames. Rip. Rip frames. Doesn't look like it's on my end. Better pick him up. Analyze tables. I mean, we did map in the entire 32 gig address space. But I would expect it could do something. It's just... I feel like Ghidra... That uh, aliasing memory, I just feel like it doesn't actually... Kind of dedupe the analysis it did from previous... Uh, previous sections. And that's kind of weird. Like, I feel like they should basically when the alias memory, I think it should be treated basically the same. And thus, things that are marked as code should be able to inherit the properties uh, of the code and data sections and tables and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of weird. Come on, Ghidra. Come on. In before, it's literally like an overnight thing. And it's like not even worth trying to do this on stream. Mm. Bad turn. Bad turn. Bink, bink, bink. So bad at corners like that. That's a clear. Not a terrible time. Pretty shit, but not not the worst time in the world. Come on, Ghidra. Like, it hasn't even identified that much code, in my opinion. 
Like, I don't know. Like, I think it hasn't even gotten to analyzing and looking for code. I guess there are a couple things decompiled. Um. Hmm. Oh, we got some xrefs. Okay, that's good. Nice. So it is picking up some xrefs, which is nice. Um. Call of Duty just shat itself. I did drop a couple frames there. Damn, that snow keeps on coming down. I thought it was supposed to stop snowing. Um, so... Let's see. Let's see if we can run strings on this. Now, I would hope that strings is going to actually fucking work on this. But it's going to be really slow, isn't it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's at, like... 3% complete. <laughs> I have no idea why Ghidra struggles to display like a thousand, or like a hundred thousand fucking values in a table. It's so weird. More cores. Yeah. I don't even think it's using cores. Yeah, it's using like maybe six cores. Sad. It's just annoying as shit, dude. I mean, we, we have everything mapped in and that's, you know, that's something. Reset, jump to here. So that, yeah, that's going to be in, that is not defined, but that is actually in flash. Skill's so bad with cores. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fucking Java, dude. Um, let's see if I can search for memory. And I just want like uh, rec v right string rec v search all. Like how quickly does this search? Oh my god, dude! How long does it take to search through 128 megs? What are you fucking doing, dude? Well, here's receive. Xrefs on receive. I think it just doesn't know how to deal with alias memory. It's ridiculous. <sighs> um, okay. Xrefs to this function. This is a receive wrapper. And we can kind of maybe see I'm curious uh, I'm gonna find a Blix I'm gonna find a uh, indirect branch I guess we can look at uh, the code that we hacked so this oh that's not in yet damn it search stopped after 500 results sick 
Yep, wouldn't want it to go over that. That's going to be way too many results for Java to handle. You can tune all of those things, I think, in here. Yeah, search limit. Ugh, it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous, dude. I just want to find a... I want to see a nice memory access. That's uh, like a stir compare. Stir copy, maybe? Stern, com uh, stern copy? HTTP. Oh, that's receive. Cool. Can a computer even count to five? I don't think so. I think that's way too high for a computer to count to. Oh, I think strings are, strings is done. All right, let's search for CGI. All right, so how long does it take to filter 700,000 rows? About this long. Literally, this is just a search filter. This is how long it takes to filter 700,000 rows to see whether or not they contain CGI. Yep, that's how long it takes. That's just how long it takes for computers to search. It's just, it's a really complex operation, a lot of math, uh, neural nets, power of Java, baby. Mm. Yep. I mean, there's just a, there's just so many rows in here. Like, I mean, it would just take so long to filter this. Like. If I wrote this in Rust, it would probably take a half an hour, to be honest. So the fact that this is this is fast, I, like, I'm impressed. Java's just good, dude. Yep. Just, just looking for CGI and 700,000 strings. I think setting row.visible equals false a million times. Running callbacks every time takes time. Yup. Uh, yup. Java, dude. Great, great performance. Great performance. Oh, yay. Oh, is it there? Uh, oh, oh. It did it. It found it. Yeah, and it treats them all as different addresses. Oh, and it doesn't even have extras to these yet. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't detect these as strings yet. Oh, there that's an address. But it could work fast in Java, but due to programming paradigm, it never will. Yeah. I mean, Java isn't terrible. It's definitely not going to be the fastest thing in the world. Yeah, and then there, that's a, uh, is that a pointer? No. I think that's a pointer. Is that a pointer? No, it's not a pointer. Um, God, it just, even though that memory is aliased, I think it's just reanalyzing all of it as basically independent. <sighs> Sad day. We really got to find where Malik is. Honestly, it wouldn't be too hard to find. It is cool to have all the RAM here. We could pretty easily snapshot this and run it in a fuzzer. Oh, it's 
soap. Oh my god, soap is so bad. Oh, soap, dude. Oh, WC scan service. Mmm. 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 Oh, is that stir compare? That's probably Sterlin. No. The fuck is that? What even is that? That looks like a stir compare. This looks like stir compare. Is that a subtraction of two things? Okay. What are these? That's Sterling. Any idea if I'll run into issues if I set Cargo's target dir for multiple projects to the same folder? Uh, I think that's gonna be a nightmare, dude. <laughs> it's a, uh, I'm gonna say a big X there. Oh, there's a good function. Good old Bixler. Soap and... I mean, I can't say for sure that that will or won't work, but I'm gonna hazard that that's not gonna fucking work. Like, and it might not work in pretty undefined ways. Um... Hmm. Yeah, we kind of have to figure out how they do threading on this system and then probably take a snapshot and then try and load it into an emulator and basically run the printer in an emulator and then we'll be able to step through it and stuff. I think that's gonna be the plan. I think I'm gonna end it here just cause I, I don't think this is gonna analyze anytime soon. Uh, and I really don't like poking around an unanalyzed database cause it just can be a mess. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Let me find someone to raid if there's anyone good to raid here. Um, let's see. What do we got? Um, well, it looks like Strawberry Hacker stream. We're going to send you over to Strawberry Hacker. All right, y'all. See y'all later. Cheers.